welcome my December warriors, everyone who finds this message. I was just um, led to, to share a message that could possibly help another soul. Always take what resonates, let the rest go. If something isn't of, isn't of, if something is not of resonance to you, it's okay. Just allow it to fall on the ears of understanding to those who who seek it or who wish to understand it, uh, or if it's some sort of confirmation for another. I, based on my level of understanding, understanding, overstanding, and what resonates with my heart, that's what you have to feel. If something resonates with your heart and you hear it, and it's like, wow, that rings true to me, to my soul, then it's for you. If you have doubt, if you have questions about it, and it just does not ring well with you, and it doesn't resonate with any part of your soul from any other past life or any resonance of any areas of your um, your path of resonance, then it, it may not be for you, or there may be a need to to be open to something new, or to research differently, or to research deeper. Um, so again, even what I say is from my level of understanding. It's information that I've received um, that sits with me. So even anything that I share. You should always do your research, your own research into it, look deeper into it. If it sparks something within you, go within yourself to see why. And if it rings true still and clearly, then it's for you. So I just was led and they wanted me to, to share uh, something um, that's been sitting with my spirit. Okay, so a lot of times we hear messages or you hear readers possibly or or different people out in your life or in your um circumstances or situations and you're hearing chosen one you're hearing star seed you're hearing galactic healer um i actually feel like i that just came to me i, I started saying galactic healer because that's something i was channeling i started saying cosmic prophet um Celestial, very <laughs> um, things of that nature because they just come to me. But star seed, uh, earth angel, chosen one, th those are very popular. Um, and they are that way, I feel, for a reason because these are very um, these are terms that resonate with my with my heart and my soul um, in a very, very um, powerful way. Um, but I do also feel as though there are certain um, energies that, especially in the spiritual community, that um, misuse those words or infiltrate the interworkings in the label more than they embody it, okay? So that's where your discernment have to come in. Um, and the main reason why I'm doing this message is because I want, even when I'm mentioning those terms and I'm speaking about a chosen one or a star seed or referring to myself as that um, or referring to my collective as that, I don't want anyone who is falling on the sound of my voice to hear me speak of such titles and feel excluded and feel as though um, in some way I am placing myself above or that I am um, speaking about a group that is above you. That is not the case. And I want to make it very clear to anyone who's ever felt that way that to, to, um, to know that that is not my intention. I feel as you come into a certain level of consciousness and understanding, understanding, overstanding, 
that you understand that there is no, there is no separation, okay? There is no separation. We are all in this realm. Um, and I will say this clearly that All of you, okay, all of us are seeds of the stars, okay, here on earth in this third dimensional reality, okay? So never feel like when myself or some other being, um, energy in your existence is speaking about a chosen one, about a star seed, um, that it's excluding you. Because if you're feeling like maybe you, you're not okay. That's what. That's where the they're saying. That's where clarification needs to be made. There are certain levels of consciousness, okay. And just because you may be at the beginning of your journey, or there's still karma you're working through, or you may feel like you're not being targeted, or you're just waking up, quote unquote. Um, don't feel as if when one speaks of star seeds, earth angel, um, chosen one, that that does not include you. Okay, they're saying that each and every one of you um, are star seeds. It's just what is your level of consciousness to remember that from which you came or that in which you are that's all that is all okay so mostly all of you are your origin is not of this earth even if and we'll get into that briefly even if you were part of the story of creation that happened right before the great flood and after, right? There were a race of beings that were created here on earth, but that doesn't separate you from being a starseed because even then your DNA okay was a mixture of different star races okay um, so that being said no no matter what phase of your evolutionary journey of consciousness higher consciousness that you're on you are a starseed okay now, to give a little bit of my perception uh, based off of my studies and what resonates with my heart, I will explain briefly, okay? Um, hmm. Okay. Since the beginning of time, We have groups of beings of light, angelic beings of light um, that quote unquote chose to fall. And when we say fall, we have to understand that there are realms that are separated by there are realms okay and they're all it's all one there's no separation it's just that on the third dimensional reality that we're existing in there's matter there's density and there is an illusion of separation okay so 
you hear quote unquote fallen angels and this and that the the what that really means is that from my level of understanding is that there's no such thing as fallen angels in the sense that our third dimensional perception sees it it's more about choosing to separate <laughs> choosing to separate from all that is from creation in order to at a, at a point in evolution to help souls on the third dimensional realm rise in consciousness and allow Gaia to raise her frequency to join and become raised above this duality of consciousness. So these angelic beings of light, okay, quote unquote, from our standpoint of understanding, chose to fall in order to assist humanity, okay? But these light angel beings and dark angel beings, they have not forgotten <laughs> that they are all that is. They are a part of that creation. They chose to fall in order to, they chose to separate um, from that consciousness in order to assist humanity. So, the Elohim, okay? The Elohim. These are the light beings that work in the astral realm. They cannot leave the astral realm to assist, but they do assist in many ways and are available to us when we decide to seek guidance, to rise in our consciousness and awaken, remember, and navigate this third dimensional reality in all of its, its chaos and all of its duality. Um, the Elohim are here to guide us and have helped humanity through many spaces and time where we could have destroyed ourselves. <laughs> um, you know, um, and I'll leave it there. To go deeper, but I'll leave it there. And these are angelic beings of light that do not get into human form and interfere with human choices, so to speak, okay? They can only help from the astral, from the angelic realms. Now there is also the seraphim, okay? And these are also angelic beings of pure darkness, of the void. But understand, only we in this reality think of like a dark angel as evil or as bad, okay? They're just darkness and we all are darkness. We all come from the void. We all have a lower self and shadow, okay? And only through the darkness do we find our light. <clears throat> so, seraphim, they are the angels of darkness, and they 
can be called on as well. Um, they're here to assist. Um, and to, they understand the shadows. They understand the things that humans do in this dualistic reality um, that bind themselves, that that create chaos, that create um, density. And they're here to assist. Um, because they are invested in our ascension and Earth's ascension, okay? And so, that being said, when we speak about an Earth angel, these beings of light and dark, although they don't interfere with Earth, they have created races of beings um, that incarnated into the earth. And their descendants and the descendants of those descendants and the descendants of those descendants and the descendants of those descendants are what you um, hear now as the earth angels. Okay? The earth angels. You could have um, earth angels who are a direct descendant of the incarnated beings created by the Elohim, okay? And these are uh, usually going to be your um, light workers, your empaths, those uh, star seeds who really feel as though that they uh, don't belong, that uh, they were kind of just placed here and they don't know what to do. And it's like they've had a lot of um, disconnect with, um, with, with the earth, especially in, their, in the beginning. Um, always understanding, always understanding that nothing's happening to you. You chose the contract. You chose to come here as an earth angel to, um, to be the light, you know, to be the, um, that, that hot spot, so to speak of, of a 5D and above light frequency. Um, and it's not an easy contract to do. Okay. So the earth angels, um, that are the descendants of the incarnated race of beings created by the Elohim, those of which you would say you would understand as earth angels. And then we have um, the seraphim, okay, that also created races of beings that were descendants of descendants of descendants of descendants that you would also um, see here on earth that are also earth angels. But these earth angels are going to be. Um, uh, more of like your dark workers, those who really dwell in darkness, and those who um, can easily uh, walk alongside demons and uh, be the mirror for these beings to do that kind of dark work um, that's needed, okay, on the planet. And these are earth angels too, okay? Don't get it twisted. Now, when you get to the seraphim in the beginning of time, again, even before the great floods, there were, the seraphim created a group of beings, and that's where we get into the story of the Anunnaki and Enlil and, and Inki, okay? Um, and the Nephilim, you know? So when the Seraphim created these beings, it was division, you know? Like the, um, the light and, and the dark and the Inlo and the Inky, and there was a lot of conflict and there's a lot of warring and misunderstandings. There was a lot of mixing in. And um, of course then, that's when they also created well, the Nephilim were the worker beings. They were the large worker beings that were created even before the flood. Um, and with the Elohim and the Seraphim, there was a period of time, okay, where this system worked, where the, um, the Elohim and their created races of beings, um, basically Earth angels that were uh, created, um, from the Elohim and their descendants and their descendants and their descendants lived 
and peace. And, um, and I can't I believe that would probably be the time of like uh, Tiamat and even um, Lemuria, things of that nature. But uh, when the Seraphim created, I guess, and that's where Yahweh comes in, right? Yahweh, um, he created the Seraphim, the beings of dark, which are not evil. They're just the void, okay? Um, love at its purest in the dark, the void. Just like the Elohim is love and its purest in the light. But again, the Seraphim, um, the purest love of the dark, okay? Um, created, again, the Yahweh um, energies and then like Enlil, Inki, the Nephilim. And that's where, like, those these groups of beings um, as their descendants and their descendants and their descendants. This is where the flood story came in. Everything had to be erased because things were getting cloudy because on the the side of the Nephilim, I mean on the side of the Seraphim, which is the you know, the dark angels, the um, angelic beings of love, of the void, created again this Yahweh energy the um, Nephilim, Inki, Inlil, division, separation, confusion, warring, okay? And this energy um, where it was this interference between power and this forgetting, um, forgetting of who you, who you are. Falling so far, right? That word falling, quote unquote, is more just forgetting that you are connected to all that is and choosing to forget and to um, be so engrossed in the density, okay, um, and the duality that you forget, okay, um, to be so engrossed in um, the 3D that you forget, you know, in a sense. And I feel like that was the plan. And this whole group with the warring, um, this group created by the Seraphim, okay, which is the beings of dark that are of love that chose to create this race of beings in order to help humanity remember and, do, and um, annihilate duality. But within all of the conflict and interference um, by this whole group created by the Seraphim, the Nephilim, and the Anunnaki, this is where the Archon the Archons come in, right? So the Archons created by the Seraphim from the group of beings that the Seraphim created, this is where things got out of control, okay? And this These Archon spirits are, they're the, they are the ones that want to interfere um, with Earth's ascension, with um, humanity, because they are so caught up in control. They love the idea of duality, okay? So these beings are the deceivers, which you would say as 
the demonic entities and the um, the demonic spirits, etc., that come to still kill and destroy. All right. So it's important to be mindful of what you, of your journey as you're evolving, as you are ascending and knowing what you're calling on because we have the Elohim and then we have the Seraphim and there are many on earth who are descendants, direct descendants of the Elohim by the Elohim, meaning the beings of light or angels that created beings that incarnated on the earth and they continue to have descendants. And some of you are earth angels, direct descendants of Elohim. And then some of you are descendants, direct descendants of the group of beings that were created on the earth from the seraphim. And those are the angels of darkness, but of love, of the void. We need both. But remember, from the seraphim, there was a group of beings that were created that went rogue, right? And these are the Archon spirits that stem from the Yahweh, the Inki Enlil, and the um, Nephilim. Not saying that all Nephilim descendants, you know, are evil, quote-unquote, or all um, Anunnaki are evil, quote-unquote. Okay? That's just the the energy that was created over the race of beings that created the discord, the calamity, the um, separation, and the control. So it's a, it's a spiritual war. It's an ongoing battle for souls. Okay? So the Archon spirits, they, unlike the Elohim, who only can help you from the astral realm, these beings can walk into bodies. They can deceive. They can take on human form. They can, you know, that's where you get your reptilians, your draconians, all of it. They can interfere with human decisions well they say if you have permission if you give them permission if you open your door if you invite them in but they have ways of getting around this remember these beings know all they know all because they are direct descendants of the seraphim okay created by the seraphim Yahweh and the Anunnaki and then the Nephilim that's the Archon. So they misuse their power. That's when they say, the devil, just like God, knows your greatest fears. These, these things. That's why as you are evolving, as you are waking up, you, it's important to keep your vibration high, to face your shadows, to face your fears, to know yourself, to love yourself. This is your, these are your shields. These are your weapons, right? It's great to add for protection, but again, Archangel Michael and some of these angels, they want you to command what you need from them, right? Command what you need. Know who you are. And instead of asking for protection, which is fine, we're all starting out, you know, there's nothing wrong with asking for protection, but it's more about commanding, knowing who you are and commanding what you desire and more so asking for the tools to be in your power, right? Archangel Michael, show me. Show me how I can put on my shield and wield my sword against that which comes to steal, kill, and destroy. Archangel Michael, show me. I command that you show me how I can step into my power and how I can face my fears. Show them to me. Illuminate them. You know? 
So anyway, back to my point. And we're going to wrap this up. Um, so, yes, the Archon Spirits, they can um, interfere. And they have ways of getting around, getting your permission. They will have no regret about entering your dream space in the astral to try to get you to sign some sort of contract or to agree to something if they can't get it, you to agree it with you know your conscious thoughts and you're consciously agreeing to it okay the the um archon spirits um the these demonic entities um uh will jump bodies they will work through other humans they will possess souls right whether this is through beings who are lost, who are open vessels, who have sold their soul, quote unquote, um, that enter in through different chakras of beings who are not balanced, they will definitely try and affect, affect you through other people and through certain beings in, of power. Okay, through the media, through all of these things, through politics, through religion. Very heavily are they laced into those um, different aspects. If you think of anything that's creating separation, okay, if you think of anything that is you know, creating the separation from love, right? Even the peace sign that we use now, two fingers out. No, the original peace sign is two fingers together, up, right, together. So if you think of Akon Spirit, you're thinking of anything that's trying to create separation because they want to encourage this separation, heaven and hell, and, um, you know, um, to help you, help you forget, like help keep you in a state of um, zombie-ism or whatever you call it. They want to keep you sleeping because they want to be in control. They know that that control is gone now. It's gone. But it's an illusion that they're still trying to keep over uh, our eyes, you know? Um, so they will come to you, right, um, with overwhelming love like they will you know if you aren't sure about an energy that's coming into your life um they will, they will love bomb you they are the love bombers they will um just shower you like you are everything you are this you are that um they could come in the form of a teacher of a guru of a whatever you know again the elohim and the angels of light um even the seraphim the angels of dark who loves humanity, that is trying to work with humanity to get ascension at its height and to get Gaia completely clear of these frequencies. They are here for you. Um, they want your Remembrance. They want your evolution and ascension. But these, the Archon Spirits, they want you sleep. They want your soul. And they want to deceive you. They want a way in. To tear you down and keep you stuck and dependent. So you have to use your discernment, okay? 
and um, and I felt like it was important that they don't want you to remember your star origin. They don't want you to um, understand that you are all that is. This is where the war and the conflict and all of it started. You know, there was one set that wanted humanity to have a gene where they could choose and there was one side that didn't want them to have that gene activated so that they could always be worshipped and that you not understand that you are love that you are part of source creation all that is and to be empowered to ascend so this group of archons that stem from the group of beings created by the seraphim who are beings of love from the complete darkness and void but these beings that they created went rogue right the nephilim and the anunnaki and again i say not all anunnaki nephilim descended beings are completely dark okay or completely evil all goes back to source there are groups from every race that choose to respect the laws of the universe, okay? It's just that most of them do not, okay? Most of these beings, these are con spirits, okay? That stem from Yahweh and certain aspects of the Anunnaki, okay? They are these Alcorn spirits who want pure control, okay? And they, that's where we get into this explanation. They, especially right now, while Earth has ascended and these waves of ascension are happening, they are targeting the star seeds, the galactic healers, the cosmic prophets, divine masculine divine feminine warriors okay here to lead and awaken groups of souls groups and groups and groups of souls that have been under their control for eons okay so that's why for me i can't speak for everyone else that you've experienced when we passionately speak about chosen ones star seeds Galactic healers, light workers. We're speaking about the ones who are at a level of consciousness where they are either leaders or they are, um, they come from a specific line, you know, in these soul groups, direct lines of the Elohim. And for some, the Seraphim, right? And because, again, all of you are star seeds, okay? It's just that everyone's on a different level of their ascension in their journey. And some have specific roles within that. Some of their roles are to help other star seeds get to that level. There's always levels, okay? And, um,. Some star seeds, some chosen ones, again, you're all star seeds again, but if we talk about the seraphim creating a race of beings like the Yahweh and um, the Anunnaki, Nephilim, that in turn created a group of beings who are still star seeds because the DNA is there. There are some well before that. Okay, groups of beings created by the Elohim and the Seraphim that were
what created? that are seated on this planet that really had not a lot to do with the race of beings that were created on the earth but were seated on the planet after that to help with earth's ascension so some of you of us who are here who are earth angels who are star seeds and galactic healers. Your direct line, your direct line from the Elohim or your direct line from the Seraphim, okay? You are direct descendants from some of of, of Lyran beings of, um, it's, it's a lot. So some of these of us are direct lines from the first line of created um, incarnated angels. So they're being targeted, okay? Targeted by our con spirits to interfere with their path, to interfere with. those that they are awakening and that's kind of where I'll leave it and they just wanted me to express um, to the collective that you all are so loved so loved by creation and never feel like when you hear someone say I'm chosen or I'm an earth angel right and because maybe you feel like you aren't doing enough or that you're not there yet or that you are experiencing karma or that you're still healing through your shadows that you are any less than anyone else okay because even if you don't know it you're doing a part okay you're doing a part and you are love you just have to remember it it's just levels of consciousness okay and if you think about it from that standpoint it's easier for you to maneuver and understand who you are, the Elohim, the Seraphim, angels, light beings of light that do not incarnate into the earth at all. They assist us from the astral. That's where they, that's as far as they can go. But that doesn't mean that they're fallen from heaven or that they're separated, they chose to separate and created races of beings to be seated on the planet to help with Gaia's ascension. And from the Elohim, there was creating a creation of beings that you were descendants of, and that's why you're an earth angel. And from the seraphim, there were a race of beings that incarnated and you are descendants from them. Seraphim is not evil. It's just pure darkness and love. Elohim is pure light and love. And the seraphim created the group of beings, the Yahweh, Benunaki, Nephilim, who then created the Archons. And those Archons are the ones that interfere jump into bodies, incarnate on earth, and create havoc and chaos. But you can totally call on a seraphim, okay? Beings, they will lovely, they will love to and happily um, help assist you if you call on them. 
because they are masters of the void in the shadows. The Elohim are masters of the light. Okay? And we have beings who are descendants of both walking the earth and are being um, targeted by the Archon spirits. Okay? So the, hopefully this helps you understand who you are better. And um, at any time I'm doing a reading and I'm talking about the chosen ones or the earth angels being attacked and hurt and that they can't be killed because they're here on a mission. Um, that is you also. That is you also, okay? Because we are all one. There's no separation. That's why um, when things happen to you, just know that you are a uh, incarnated angel, okay? Um, and you chose to be here to be a hotspot of 5D light for Earth's ascension, okay? And even um, these archons uh, who are working through um, um, certain vessels and um, uh, souls who um, antagonize or who do the dark magic, the black magic, who um, are service of self, um, it, it's all for your highest growth, your highest ascension. That's it. To face your shadows, to um, sharpen your sword, and to prepare you for the journey home. Okay? Um, yeah, because... <laughs> it's all about balance. Ascension is just the polarities. Two opposite sides becoming one. Okay, guys. Um, yep. The Archon spirits, they want to uh, interfere with your transformation, affect your heart center, and keep you bound. <laughs> but you are meant to shine. You are meant to, to remember, to rise above fear. And that is what we are doing. That is what we are doing. Okay. Um. <laughs> I hope this is helpful to you guys. I'm going to pull an oracle. Just because they said to do so. Mirrored souls. Number 21. It's a beautiful picture of two souls connected at the crown chakra, at the third eye in the crown. At the third eye, they're connected with the beautiful light. The light pushes up into the crown and they're connected at the hair. The hair is just lifted up and it's like white light waves flowing through, okay? Um, but the heart chakra is connected and it's a spiral of light radiating pink and green and white, okay? Mirrored souls, number 21. This is about understanding uh, that you're not separate, that you are a part of all that is. When you go to sleep tonight, understand that you are a part of all that is, right? beyond space and time and that space right there that sweet spot when you're safe and comfortable in that spot there's nothing that can touch you there is no fear okay that right there is the void that right there is the light and the dark integrated okay um 
this is speaking to me also about union, right? That integration I've been talking about. Yes, it could be with another person. It can be with um, a part of your oversoul coming into this earth to help you at this time. Um, it could be something that you're integrating within yourself. But I also feel like it's just you being one, right? With the all, okay? And that is um, your strength. That is uh, coming to you now on Gaia, um, creating this new chapter, but you must be fearless because you are about to be uh, gifted. You're about to be, what's the word I'm looking for? You're about to be, they call it a, they call it a, um, it's an inauguration of sorts. <laughs> um, but you're about to uh, have the golden crown placed upon you, okay, that ignites all hope and the world, the world within worlds, okay? And that is benign energy. And that's what they wanted me to say. Thank you. They said, you said everything we wanted you to say except the other misconception, the 144,000. The 144,000, that's also um, something created by the Archon Spirits, okay? Get limitations out of your mind. 144,000, 144, 1,444. It keeps changing because they would love for you to think that there is a limit, okay, on the amount of souls that are chosen or that um, are whatever the case may be. That 144,000 is not a specific, specific amount of, okay, the Archon Spirits would love for you to think that. There's just 144,000 that creates so much separation, right? That's limit mind thinking. That's, 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 I'm not, tell, I'm not telling you what to do or think, but for me, in my heart, it doesn't resonate with all that is. It doesn't resonate with creation. It doesn't resonate with um, it just doesn't resonate. Okay? It's limit. It's limited thinking. It's, it's um, not heart chakra expanding. So, they're saying that think more um, about the 144,000 just being a frequency, right? It's a frequency, it's a wavelength, and again, 144 is nine. So it's creation, it's um, like nine ether. It's a frequency that is gonna resonate on the earth at the height of ascension or something like that is what they're saying okay so don't you know if there's anyone that's pumping and pumping at you and just talking about I'm 144,000 and you're 144,000 or or love bombing you or or coming in strong that is uh the archon spirits that is the uh demonic spirits you know and these are the energies that overtake groups, you know? Again, not all 33 degree masons are evil, not all masons are evil, but there are, many of them are. You know, not all reptilians are evil, but there are, most of them are. Not many of draconians are evil, but there are most, most of them are. There are not all um, people in the music industry that are run through, ran through, um, but many of them are. Okay, so you can look at some of the things that are happening in like the music industry and you can kind of see that that's, if you are chosen, that you're seeing things in your reality take that same shape because things are falling, things are ending, the control is being released, okay? 
So again, that's what they wanted me to say. 144,000 is just a frequency. It's a nine energy, okay? So get out of that. That limit, that limit, the limitations mindset. That's what they want you to be in. They would love, our conspirators would love for you to think that there's only 144,000 chosen, okay? Okay? Love wins. All right, so number 21 and it's mirrored souls i don't even think i have that book okay i don't have that book with me so i'm gonna choose a different one but let's see hopefully one comes out that i have that book from but yeah mirrored souls there's definitely um integration happening there are unions happening right now that are being attacked um there's a big mass um, energy here that are targeting um, those who are in the dark night of the soul. Those who are newly awakened. That's a very um, sensitive place to be in. Imagine when you just lay down your sword and you're, you've been through tower after tower after tower and you're now in the dark night of the soul and you're not resisting it. Everything around you is falling away because... The universe, God, creation, wants you to look within. Wants you to look within at your shadow, at your inner child, and start the process of healing at square one, at the root, right? Um, so that's a very sensitive place to be at. That's just like someone that's just, just got out of surgery, okay? They just got out of surgery, and, and they're in a coma. And they just wake up from their coma, and they're starting to remember little bits and pieces but it's very foggy, right? That's a very sensitive time. And that's why um, people who are um, either just waking up or people who are at the verge of a new ascension. These are people who are already ascended, who are about to embark on fully embodying like the Merkaba or coming into some type of royal remembrance of who they are. Again, that's why specific earth angels, star seeds are being attacked, are being targeted. Okay, this is also why certain entities or beings who are attacking some of these earth angels, okay, um, are getting immediate backlash, instant karma. I told you guys, there's a whole another level of the spiritual war that we're in right now. And these earth angels are being protected by Elohim, the seraphim right now. And these demonic entities are getting hit, like Pac says. This is what you get for fuck with the wrong mix, okay? That's that song. Listen to it. It will tell you clearly. They swing in wild, but their styles miss me, right? These entities don't know what to do with themselves because they are being exposed left and right for effing with the wrong ones, right? Direct descendants of the Elohim and the Seraphim, period. So because they can't F with you, a lot of them are targeting newly transforming beings, those who are laying down their swords, those are who are having ego death, not death, but they're starting to face it. They're, they're laying down their swords and they are doing the work. Okay? And they're being targeted right now. So, just keep your vibrations high right now. Keep your, ba your emotions balanced and stay in your heart. Okay, and then we have um, third eye vision. Okay, number 63, I can't make it up, number nine. Okay, reclaim your mind. Hmm, it's so interesting. It is the very last card in the deck. 
um, is just speaking of it's the very last chapter of this duality plan. That's what they're saying. Yep. The very last chapter of this duality plan that's been enacted. Something about a sharpshooter. Aerial formation. Bring down a stag and fix its horns upon Ariel's head. She hears the wisdom of our ancestors. That's a message for some of you. Bring down a stag and fix its horns upon Ariel's head. She hears the wisdom of our ancestors. Highland game. The mountain. To mountain its hide, it consumes a variety of rocks, not to mention a variety of souls. Yeah, that's what's coming to an end because she hears the wisdom of our ancestors. She, meaning you, meaning all, are receiving the codes, the information. Souls are straying into the valley and their souls are rising to be claimed their rightful place in the stars. The renegade forces closed in. The blockades failed one by one. These Archon spirits are being dispersed one by one by one. They are fatigued. Wow. Star seeds and chosen ones. Are having flashbacks. Flashbacks, right? Third eye vision, number 36. Okay, guys, I hope this message helps somebody um, to clarify who you are. To not feel like you're separate. To not feel like um, you're better than anyone, you know, um, or that anyone's better than you. That's one of the other signs they're saying to be mindful of. Um, if you're listening to someone and they are making you feel like you are less or my blood type is this and yours is that. So you're this, you know. Um, I'm this and I'm that. And, you know, making you feel in their spirit that uh, you are less than then that's something you have to take into consideration when you're doing your own research as well. Okay. So liberate your vulnerability and reclaim your mind. The third eye chakra is located along the brow line with its axis point between the eyes. Every individual has a third eye, but not all choose to open. In ancient times and across different cultures, the third eye was an asset. The ancient Egyptians, Greeks, and Hindus all viewed the third eye and pineal gland as a gateway. To the heavens, expanding consciousness and higher wisdom. Known in Sanskrit as Anya, it means command and perceiving. The multidimensional door allows individual glimpses into different realms, as well as remote viewing, distant healing, visionary experiences, and energetic practices. Using third eye vision requires careful practice, psychic debris, energetic distortions, and imbalanced frequencies can stick to the third eye chakra and to an individual's aura and energy bodies. This can leave you with emotional disturbance, insomnia or nightmares, 
a negative outlook on life or mysterious physical aches, pains, and illness and or illness. Currently, you may be feeling forgetful, moody, and extremely sensitive to smells, light, and taste. Visual stimulation is overpowering. Now is the time to reclaim your mind, satisfy your needs first instead of people pleasing. Right now, feelings of vulnerability will rise to the surface. Fear of self-exposure and judgment will influence your current relationships. Try to avoid crowds and busy places as collective mental energy will influence your state of mind. Continually try to protect yourself from harsh criticism and personal judgments will keep you in a defensive mindset and influence your decision making. Intuitively, don't rush into a third eye experience. Take it slow and seek a suitable teacher to avoid spiritual risks. If you wish to intensify or gain third eye vision, more regularly activate and decalcify your pineal gland through visualized meditation. Shadow aspects to be mindful of. Within yourself and others, like I said, guys, you are protected. You are most definitely protected. Okay? Especially those chosen ones and starseeds who are at a level of consciousness, who are actively doing the work on self, right? That's the only separation. You are all starseeds. You all are here to do divine work. But some are stepped fully into that energy. And some are, again, just laying down their sword and just starting the, the journey. And again, if I just read, some of you need to be mindful of. At this time, those of you who are just waking up, you're being targeted hard. So get into your protection practices. Get into your meditations. Focus on self. Avoid crowds, things of this nature. Protect yourself when you're sleeping. Wear your amulets. Wear your um, your different protection stones and things of that nature um, to protect you while you're sleeping. Always wear a ring. Always wear something around your neck, okay, that protects you. Selenite, tourmaline, things of that nature. Um, but for those of you, again, who are coming to realizations of yourself because you um, are working on self, you know that you're not better than anyone else. You are just coming into understanding of your past lives energy, of your soul origins. And um, some of you are just from an ancient royal line. Some of you just know exactly that you are a descendant of Elohim or the Seraphim or just whatever the case may be. You are protected because there have been um, spaces um, that have been um, put in place um, to protect you at this time because there are certain energies that have crossed the line and you have fulfilled your contract. The spiritual warfare is over, okay? But you still need to be protected because these um, Archon spirits and these demonic entities, they are not s stopping. You have entities and beings and people around you who have been ran through, walked through, okay? That have been actively um, been entered into, okay? By demonic spirits. They're just, they're, they're, they're like puppets, but there's a puppet master that's, that's working through them, okay? But these en entities and energies and entities that some of you are connected to, they are not themselves. They are just completely ran through. They are completely being used. And you just have to protect yourself from these inner energies. They are right now going through it. They are emotionally distraught. They are losing a lot. They are drastically um, at a loss. And they are dangerously um um uh what's the word i'm looking for dangerously erratic and um desperate for your light for your source for your source connection for your um energy flow okay um so they're attempting to access you through the astral realm to connect with your third eye to attack your crown or to enter into a contract with you in the astral because they know that you are armored up they know that you are protected they know that you can't be fooled you will not invite them in so you're protected all of you are again some of you are doing divine work and you are um extremely targeted so you fulfilled your contract and you are not being accessed because you are doing the spiritual war thing anymore 
these are just energies who are just drastically and dramatically and desperately attempting to connect with you. That's it. It's like the war's already been won, and but they're still trying to find a way into the camp, or they're still trying to do something, okay? But the Spirit is asking you to, to do your normal things that you always do. Just keep your vibrations high. Think positive. You release any fear, guilt, things like that. They're looking for any changes in your emotional energy so they can find a way in. So just don't slip on your pimp end, <laughs> so to speak. Don't slip on your on your work, on your energy work, okay? You're protected, but just still do what you need to do. Those who are new on the journey, just get with someone who is more advanced on their journey. Um, uh, but the things I just spoke about in this message, being prepared, being aware, are, are essential right now, okay? Um, so yeah, um, practice forgiveness, practice um, acceptance of self, smile, laugh, work with children, sing, cook, uh, work out, keep your body moving, you know, dance, keep those chakras all moving around, and keep the light dispersed evenly throughout your body, uh, rest for sure, um, right now, drink plenty of water. You know, for some of you, it may be a good idea to eliminate dense foods, like maybe even meats or, or dairy or things like that. I'm not pushing a, a diet on anyone, but just being mindful of certain things that you're eating or um, implementing more fruits, you know, more water, things like that. It's always going to be great uh, to keep your, keep you balanced because we are in these bodies, okay? So, you know, um, more than anything, um, like I said, for me, the reason I did this reading is because I am resonating with the fact that no one should feel like they're not good enough or that they are higher than anyone else, okay? Even if you are a uh, earth angel, you're here to do divine work, you are a vessel. A lot of you are channelers and you bring in information um, and you are that of that, you know what I mean? Um, it's, 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 it's beautiful to know who you are and who you descend from and where you, um, what you're connected to, but not to feel as if you um, are better than anyone else, okay? Your goal is here to help others remember that they are that as well, that we are all love and we are have all access to creation and that you are just a reflection of that, okay? And... Um, If there was something else, a point I was trying to make about, um, the main thing is that the goal is to, to remember that there's no separation. There's no separation, um, and part of that is what brings you in alignment and into your power. Um, you chose to be here. And um, there's some other point, but who knows? Maybe it'll come back. Um, so, shadow aspects to be mindful of within yourself and others during this time. Uh, it's delusion. Okay? Uh, fictitiousness, being overly studious, possibly, um, and self-sacrificing, okay? Uh, your sacred crystal is Iolite, I-O-L-I-T-E, Iolite, angel assistance, Archangel of Jeremiah, opening third eye vision, and prophecy. Okay. Affirmation. I see clearly and accurately through my mind's eye. I see clearly and accurately through my mind's eye. Guys, I hope this was helpful for you. Remember, 
kind of why they're saying stay in your page of wands energy but stay in your innocence um keep creating um there is there is something about your power lying in your innocence and something new being created and that now is divine timing okay um The spark of creation lies within you, okay? And um, nothing or no one can take that away. Nothing or no one can take that away. Um, the Christ grid is coming down, right? Archangel Metatron. Just... Um, Something about the Metatron symbol, doing that visualization and meditation, it's going to help someone at this time with protecting their crown or grounding in to a grid or someone is, you know, just waking up. Do your research on the on Metatron's cube and that will be a great source of visual, visualization for someone, okay? It's just a yellow light, is what I'm saying. Um, there's also something about your uh, solar plexus, your gut, what you're eating, your confidence, your will, okay? Your will. Your son. Death and rebirth. You are so special to creation. There's a group of beings that want you to focus on the wrong things. They want you to give your homage to a group of beings that had a lot to do with creating a group of beings, creating humanity on this earth, but that's distortion. And they're saying being over studious just means a lot of information right now. There are beings in the spiritual community that are archons and their job is to interfere with masses of beautiful, beautiful souls just like you waking up and steering you down a path, right? There is even a group of beings that sit somewhere in the ethers and interfere with souls that pass and reincarnate. So what they're saying is that all information isn't good information and always check your sources. You're going to see real time some of these groups, right? We're talking about cults and groups and all this stuff a lot lately because they're falling, okay? They're falling. If you want to connect with a, the source, then you need to be connecting with the Elohim. They're there for you. Okay? They do not interfere. They don't, they, don't, they don't walk into bodies and come here and interfere with the earth. They are angels of light that assist you from their space in the astral. And many, they created a, a group of beings that many of you are descendants of. And then you have the seraphim who are angels of the dark, which is pure void, zero point energy. And they are here to assist you as well, to help you understand your journey here on earth and to save you from yourself because they understand how humans kind of just in a way 
make choices that can destroy them. And there are descendants of angels here on earth that are descended from the seraphim. But that group of beings that the seraphim created, Yahweh, Anunnaki, and there are some descendants of Nephilim and Anunnaki who are, are of service of others, not self. But there are masses and masses, a majority of them that are not of service of others. They're service of self, and they created this group called the Archons that want to control you and keep you stuck in a duality and density and never to remember who you are. But you are chosen and you are a sea from the stars and everything is being put in place for you to remember who you are, remember that there's no separation and to understand that you've already won. That is the divine paradox. That is the illusion of this realm, okay? Go ahead and die. Be reborn. Take the adventure from the zero point and rise, okay? From the fool to the world. And from the world back into the stars. There was a promise made, and it will be fulfilled. There is help, okay, to guide you on your path. Like I said, your will is strong, and the Christ grid is golden. coming down for you. You are true. You are chosen. You are an earth angel. You are a star seed. Here to do the divine work. Look at the stars. Look how they shine for you. And everything you do. Yeah, they were all yellow. I came along. I wrote a song for you. And all the things you do. And it was called yellow. So then I took my turn. Oh, what a thing to have done. And it was all yellow. Your skin, your skin and bones turn into something beautiful. Do you know? I love you so. You know I love you so. I swam across, I jumped across for you. Oh, what a thing to do, cause you are all yellow. Yeah, your skin, oh yeah, your skin and bones turn into something beautiful. It's true. Look how they shine for you. Look how they shine for you. Look how they shine. Yes, you are a sea of the stars. A beautiful, beautiful sea of the stars. An earth angel. Look at the stars. Look how they shine for you and all the things that you do.